Basically, killing off the old man or conquering your flesh or your lust. Something that, you know, when we are coming to this walk, you know, especially coming from the world, um, that uh, we have to do that. You know, sometimes people, some of us, you know, we might have something that's that's harder than others. Some is just easy, you know. Some parts of our people can put down the pork and strip and stuff easier than uh, people that's been fornicating or something. Anything that's holding you back, you know, lying, backbiting, um, you know, hating. Just, you know, we have things in us that we fight daily because this flesh is weak. And, you know, the enemy, which is Satan, he knows our weaknesses. You know, he, he, he loves to tempt us. He loves to, you know, bring stuff that we might say to try to manifest in our life that we can fight at. So we're going to start um, just right now. So, Ka, uh, we're going to go to, this is, a, this is an apocrypha. This is Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, can y'all see the screen? Yes, sir. Huh. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So we see, um, it says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So this is what we understand that when we when we make a, a, um, a conscious you know, decision of saying, Lord, I want to serve you. The Lord is telling that, you know, he's telling you son or daughter, you know, we're saying son, but daughter or son says, when you come to serve me, prepare thy soul for temptation, meaning get ready, gird yourself for this walk. This is not going to be just some cakewalk where it's bubble gums and hugs and, and cotton candy. You know what I'm saying? So he's letting us know you know, we come in, especially coming from the world, we got to gird ourselves up. We got to prepare ourselves, prepare our souls to serve the Lord for temptations that are going to be coming. The Lord's going to tempt you in the right way because he wants to see how strong you is. He knows how strong you is. He's going to give you things in, in, your, in your walk that's going to make you stronger. But also Satan's going to tempt you with things that wants to hinder you, right? So... We go to us uh, now. We can go to Psalms 32 and verse 5. Psalms chapter 32 and verse 5. We'll see how we uh how we have to uh conquer this flesh, this is lust, and this old man that we have. So Psalms chapter just read when you get there. Uh. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said. I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my son, Selah. Of my sin, of my sin. sin so sir. we see right here that it's telling you. So now we know when we come in to serve the Lord, we know we have things we fighting with, right? It says, I acknowledge my sins unto thee. Unto thee, who is thee? Unto the Father, unto the Son, right? It says, and my iniquity have I not hid. So you can't, don't cover, don't cover your sins up. Acknowledge them. Confess your sins to the Most High, right? Through Christ. You know what I'm saying? And it says, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquities of my sins. So when we come into the Lord, we know we're fighting with things. We have to confess them. We have to acknowledge them. So we can fight these things off. So you can pray fast and get rid of these things. You don't want to cover up your sins, cover up anything that's your nickname is holding you that can hold you back. That's what you don't want to do. You know what I'm saying? So you want to acknowledge what is going on, what is you fighting with, and ask the, the father through the son to, you know, to kill them things, to, to let them things go. 
So this is how you got to, this is the, this is the, this is the first, the second step into conquering that old man, you know, killing them off, mortifying these, these lusts, this flesh. We'll keep moving. So Proverbs 28 and verse 13. Proverbs 20, verse 13. When you get there, read. You said 20? 28. Proverbs 28 and verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and for sake of them shall have mercy. So we see again, it's telling you, don't try to cover your sins up. It says, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. How are you going to grow if you covering up your sins? How are you going to grow and prosper in this walk? All you're going to do is be stagnant. You've been in this walk for three, four years, and you're still fighting off on something you know you probably could have dealt with a while ago, some, a year or two ago, when the most I was waiting for you to, to bring it to him. Sometimes, you know, we do get stagnant. Sometimes it's hard to let go of things that, you know, a lot of people don't want to come in this walk, especially you knowing this truth. You tell people you got to, you know, stop certain things, especially just, 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 just plainly the dietary law, right? People don't want to come. But, you know, we have sins that we got to confess. You might be lusting on women. You might be fornicator, a whoremonger. You know, you might was one of this, uh, you know, get high, things that you love. But you have to Bring it to the most high. Do not cover it up because you want to prosper. There's no reason why we should be stagnant in our walk. You have to gird up and get strength. This is how you get strength by confessing your sins, giving them to, giving them to Christ. Like he said, what he say? Um, in, in Matthew's, uh, I think it's 11 and 28, 29, 30, like that. He says, give them to me. Paraphrasing. He said, give them to me. My yoke is easy. He can bear these things. We're not we're not made to carry these sins on us like this. We're supposed to, we're supposed to give them to the give them to Christ. Right? So now we're gonna go to Proverbs 3 and you're gonna read verse 6 and 7. When you get there, read. Proverbs 3, 6, and 7. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So we see, and so in all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge who? Acknowledge Christ. Acknowledge the Father. Acknowledge him. And he shall direct. Who's going to direct your paths? The spirit of the most high. That's right. He says, be not wise in our own eyes. Don't listen. Do not be what don't think you know it all. Don't think you got this. Don't think your own will is, oh, I can do this. I can fight this off on my own. No. This is what the Father sent Christ for. And when Christ said, What? I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit to teach you all things, to bring back to remembrance that comforter. This is what it hit, so you can depart from evil. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Don't hide your sins, people. Anything you're fighting with, this walk is not, it's not a cakewalk. And we know we're in these last days. We in the, we're in the last hours. I ain't even even say days. We see what's going on. So we got to understand, we got to be ready for what's going on, and you have to be girded up. That's right. He's coming back for a blameless a spotless, you know what I'm saying, at Chase version. And that's what we got to do daily is be that and try to be that. So acknowledge the fire, acknowledge this, acknowledge his word and depart from evil. Mm -hmm. Evil is our flesh, the sin. We'll keep moving. Go to James chapter two. I'm sure we're going to see how we got to, uh, what we got to do, what else, what else we got to do for this how we gonna kill this uh this old man off in his flesh? We're gonna conquer this thing. It's gonna be a remedy right here. It's gonna be some instruction. Can we write hope you're writing this down? This right here is gonna help us, help all of us. 
James chapter 2 and verse 20. But what thou know, O vain man, that faith without, that faith without works is dead. So we see right here, it says, but wilt thou know, O vain man, the faith without works is dead. You have to put in work with faith. You're not going to do anything. If you want to lose weight, you can't sit home eating ice cream like, man, I got to lose weight. But not going to the gym or going to the track and walking and cutting back on eating the right things, right? You can have faith all you want that, that you're going to lose this weight. But you don't put in no work, there's nothing going to happen, right? So if you want these, you want this, these, these sins, these things that's this old man that's still in your back, that monk, I said that monkey on your back. You want that thing gone? Whatever you're fighting with, you have to put in work. You have to put in work. You got to put in this work through these scriptures, through this word, reading, studying, fasting, praying, killing off that old man so you can get right. Mm -hmm. It tells you that you have to have faith. Faith comes with obedience. So you can believe all you want. If you ain't putting in work, some kind of work, it could be in vain. That's right. Because you'll still have that sin on you. You'll still be fighting. You'll still be, you won't be that spotless. You won't, won't be that blameless you're looking for. Because you ain't let it go. People, let go whatever's holding you back, whatever's hindering you. I don't care what it is. Conquer your flesh. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. You're going to read verses 3 through 6. We're going to keep going. We're going to see what we got to keep doing, people. We got. We gonna. We gonna get this thing. This right here is gonna. This is right, these. These scriptures are gonna show you. Give you a good. Just like a, as they say, uh, it's instructions. <laughs> Second said, uh, chapter ten. ten. Verse three. Start at three and go to six. Come. For though we walk in the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. Now, hold on, hold on. Do you see that? We walk in this body every day, this dirt suit, right? You walk in, you walk in flesh every day, but you don't war against your flesh after your flesh. When you in sin, you're not fighting after, you're not fighting your, this flesh. You know what I mean? When you in sin, you out here doing this, doing wrong, you out in this world, you ain't because the man Satan's happy now. He you ain't fighting that because that's not the war you're gonna fight because you ain't now when you walking in the spirit and your body is worn and when you worn against your flesh, that's what you you fighting right. But it's telling you, for though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after flesh. Keep reading. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. So these weapons. So now, which when you go to war, these weapons ain't corny. Weapon, you, I don't care. I don't care if you got 12, 13, 14 guns and all the bullets you got. Uh -huh. Swords, anything, grenades, missiles. None of that is, that's, that's, it's going to do nothing in this walk. This walk is spiritual. We fighting a spiritual battle. And I'm gonna show you about what, what I'm gonna, and when you get down this lesson, I'm gonna show you about the weapons that you need. But it says these weapons ain't carnal, right? But mighty through God pulling down of strongholds. And strongholds is what? The things holding you back. That old man, you know what I mean? That monkey, you know what I mean? These sins. Go ahead, verse five. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Casting down all imaginations. That's them thoughts. That's them thoughts in your head that, that be round, that be coming up in you. You be fighting sometimes. 
you got to cast them things down. The this the, the weapons the weapons you need is can cast these imaginations down, and every high thing that's exalted against yourself, against the knowledge of God, or everything you fight against that is exalted over the knowledge of God, man, you can cast them down, right? It says, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So you got to put them, you got to get that sin and all of them and that iniquity that you're fighting with, right? And you got to put it in captivity. It's like they say, you got to put it in like a, a lockbox, lock the key, and don't open it again. You want to put them things in a jail cell, as they say, this is why you get life without parole. That's what you want to do with just with, with these imaginations, these things you're fighting with. You put it away, life without parole, because you want to have your thoughts want to be the obedience of Christ. You don't want to be thinking of like this world. You're only thinking of these thoughts that Satan put in your head. These things can hinder us, man. Would not put give us to the level we need to be in Christ. Verse six, and having in and having in a ready readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. See, when we do that, it says having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So you want to revenge your disobedience when you was out here and you know you going off and you out here, you know you walking around here knowing you married to something and you trying to deal with another woman and you know that's wrong, you got to revenge that disobedience now. When you come back into this faith, you come back into this walk and you come to that old man, you're going to do right now. Now when that woman try to come back at you, you're going to cut her down. You're going to, oh, 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 oh. Now, nah, like, I ain't that person anymore. I'm not that man anymore. You're going you gonna to send them away. You're going to rebuke them thoughts, anything. If you was a thief, when you go back to work, you're not going to keep stealing out the registers anymore. You want to revenge disobedience and, and, and you want to come to the obedience of Christ. Mm -hmm. Walking in the spirit, keeping these laws and commandments. That's the obedience. That's what we need to do, people. This warfare, these, these, these warf this warfare is not carnal. These weapons are not carnal spiritual we're gonna get them and show you and go to galatians chapter 5 verse 16 we're gonna get here real quick bear with me galatians chapter 5 we're gonna start at verse 16 we're gonna see what we gotta walk in now you know what I mean? remember said we walk in that flesh right well we're gonna get to these we're gonna get to something else about what you gotta walk in start at verse 16 to 21 this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit, people, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. These, these, these what do they say? The laws are the law is spiritual. Mm -hmm. Only so on what? Carnal, right? But it's telling you to walk in the spirit. Don't walk in the flesh. Don't walk like you gotta be set apart. So when that flesh is up, trying to rise up, nah, you got to keep putting that spirit on. Christ said these words I speak to you are spirit and life. Put, eat this scroll, eat these words every single day if you have to. So you can be in the spirit and the spirit going to give you life. Keep going. For the flesh lusts after the spirit and the spirit after the flesh. And these are contrary one to, to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Uh -huh. But if you so, get out of the spirit, you are not under the law. There you go. It says, for the flesh lusts after the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. It's just it's a fight. It's like a tug of war. Like tug of war back when he was a kid. You got, you had two teams. You got... So sometimes, you know, the team is winning this way, and then you pull back this way. You're playing a tug of war, right? You back. In. So your spirit and your flesh is fighting. And your spirit, because the spirit, the Holy Spirit isn't trying to get you like, nah, son. You know what I mean? No, no, sister. Like, come on. 
Now nah, you got to come this way. Stay on that straight and narrow. Don't go broad. Don't go left to right. But no, but now the, the flesh is fighting you, trying to toss you, right? As they say, to and fro. Trying to have you that double mind that don't want you to have, that want you to have. So now you're doing this, and now you're fighting this. Now you go, oh, please God, and you're going, nah. Don't be contrary one to another. That's contrary one to another. I mean. So you keep walking in the spirit. Verse 18 says, but ye are led of the spirit. Ye not under the law. That that law, what else? Sin and death? You don't want to be under the law. You want to keep the law. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uh -huh. uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, mm -hmm. emanations, uh -huh. wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyance, murderers, drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of okay. which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So it's telling you right here. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. So all this stuff that Brother Kai just read are works. It didn't say, it didn't say the works of the spirit. It didn't say you walk in the spirit. This is all of the flesh. This is contrary to the most high, to his laws and commandments, to what he's telling us to walk into. This is telling you that you, you're adulterous fornication. I ain't even got to read them all. You're unclean. Adultery, all this stuff, you would not inherit the kingdom. So this is why these are things right here. If anything that you're fighting with, even if it's not on here, what I'm saying is you have to kill, mortify that old man. Take all to anything that's holding you back because anything right here is contrary to the spirit. Guess what? What the what is it? The last thing said that they which do such things should not inherit the kingdom of God. People, if you want the kingdom, you got to kill these things. You got to get rid of them. Got to get rid of them. We're going to keep going. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. So we got to keep doing, people. We're going to keep going and show you what this, what this word is telling, what this word is saying. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. So this is what else we got to do. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. No, it said take up the cross, Kyle, once a week. Daily. Once a month. Daily. Sometimes. Daily. It says, and he said to them, who is the he? Christ. Mm -hmm. He says, if any man will come after me, right? And he means you're going to follow him. As they call themselves, you know what I say? Christians, you'll follow Christ. If you're going to follow Christ, right? He says, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. That means every single day and follow him and follow me, he said. This is a daily process. Mm -hmm. This ain't just something you do and now you put it on the shelf and now you're like, nah, I'm going to pick it back up this week. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm follow. You know what I mean? I'm going to deny myself this week. This man, next week, man. Woo! Man, I'm about to go back to the strip club. I'm about to get back eat these ready. I miss them. Next week after that, you, oh, nah, I mean, I'm, I got to do right. This right. is a daily thing. Die mm -hmm. daily. Right? Die daily. Take up your cross daily. Deny yourself. Anything that's, that's, that's not of the Father, that's not of this word of God, deny it. If you are committing adultery, deny it. If you are stealing, if you're fornicating, if you got adultery, I mean, a, a idolatry, anything, lasciviousness, like to argue, like to always start trouble, like to backbite, gossip, deny yourself of them things. I take up your cross daily. That's right. Every single day. You know what they say? Oh, I stay ready so I got to get ready? Yeah. 
daily. We're gonna keep going. I see. I, I want. I want to get this. Get to this word. Romans thirteen and verse fourteen. Die, deny yourself daily, people. This is what we got to do, family. Romans thirteen and verse fourteen. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So it says, put, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on his word. Christ mm -hmm. is the word made flesh, right? That's right. So you're putting on this word. You're putting on Christ daily and make no provision for the flesh. Mm -hmm. Don't leave a crack. Don't leave no way for the devil can get in. Man, seal this thing up. Try to seal this thing up, your mind, all that. Try to seal it to the point where the Satan, that them thoughts and that, that evil stuff don't get in. It says to fulfill the lust. No, you don't want to put the, the flesh on. You don't want to make a business for the flesh so you can feel the lust of the flesh. No, that's going to kill you. Spiritually, said the wages of sin is death. You might not do it. You might not get. You might not get that judgment now. But people, you don't want that that second death. Mm -mm -mm. Deny ourselves daily. Put on Christ. Put on His Word daily. Not it. Not not. You know. Or on. Man, I work so hard. I only go read maybe once a week. When I do read, I might get a couple verses and I'm asleep. Man, you better make you better make provisions for this word. You better uh -huh. try to figure out. You better. Oh, I can't, man. Lord, you know what? I, I know I got to work. I feel, but man, I need to take off some time. I need to start not doing so much overtime. If you doing anything that's taking you from the word of God, that means you're putting God on the back burner. That means you're going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know why? Because you don't have, you're not going to have um, that strength when you need it when them temptations come. It says in um, Proverbs, it says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is weak. Mm -hmm. So why is your strength is weak then? I think it's Proverbs 24 and 10. If your strength is weak and you faint in the day of adversity, well, now when you're fighting something and you fall short of it, it's because why? What happened? Because you ain't put that. You ain't put that armor on. You ain't put that strength. You ain't got that strength to fight it off. This this word right here is what gives us strength. That's right. I know it's gonna be hard sometimes. It ain't gonna be like it's super easy, or you know, sometimes we can might teach a lesson and sound like, oh, this nah, I fight too daily. We're gonna keep going. Romans 6, go to Romans 6, start at 12 to 14. Romans 6. All praise the most high, man. Let's, let the Lord be edified. Hope y'all getting something out of this. Romans 6, start at 12 to 14. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither you he your members. Hold on, hold on, God. Hold on, God. Sorry about that. You see that? It says, let not sin therefore reign. That means dwell. That means live in you. And your mortal body that ye shall obey it in the lust thereof. Don't let sin have dominion over you. Do not let sin have dominion over you. Go ahead, Kyrie. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Go ahead. But yield yourselves unto God mm -hmm. as those that are alive from the dead, and okay. your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Mm, go 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. There you go. It says, not verse 13, now they yield your members, ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness and unto sin. The instruments is your body. 
your mind, all that. Don't, don't, don't yield them. Don't yield your members to unrighteousness, unto sin. But yield yourself unto God as though as those that are alive from the dead. You're quickening. As they say in, in I mean, Ephesians chapter 2, you're quickening from sin and from, from death. Because now you was dead, right? You was that dead man walking. You was that dead sister walking in sin. Now you left the congregation of the dead. Now you're in the walking in the light. You're walking with the children of the life. You have life in you now. These words are going to bring you life, not death. You're not going to be the walking dead. Walking around here, or everything, like everything's good, but you're just dead spiritually. Then it says, for you, for your sin shall not have dominion over you. It's not going to reign over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Grace is for law keepers, people. Mm-hmm. Not just for anybody walking around here just doing what they want to do. Oh, God, know my heart. Oh, I'm under grace. You know, Lord, no, he's working on me. All right, he playing. Deny yourself, people. Put on Christ. Don't let sin have dominion over you. Kill off that old man. First John chapter 2 and verse 16. Almost, we're going to get, we just keep moving. So we got to do, we got to put off this stuff that was this world. Anything that's holding you back is that lust. Anything, anything. Lust can be, it's not just lust over women or men. Any, you can lust over money. You can lust over cars, you no know, worldly things. Let's go ahead. First John chapter two. I mean, yeah, first John two and 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the, and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. All that is of the world, not of the Father. Mm -hmm. Right? Lust of the flesh, the eyes, and pride. You know what I'm saying? You got the lust of the flesh, meaning all this stuff you, you, you want in your flesh. You know? That flesh want, you know, fornication. That flesh want to sleep around. That flesh want to... You know, do drugs and stuff. That flesh want to just do whatever it want to do. You lusted after that. Then it says, um, lust of the eyes. All you see, you coming after what somebody else got. You coming mm -hmm. after your, your neighbor's wife or your neighbor's husband. You coming because they got a nice yard. They got a nice house or nice cars. You over there hating on them. You you want everything they got. So they're going to ain't trying to get it yourself. That pride of life. You have pride that you got all this money. That you, you can do what you want to do. But that's not of the father. Oh, I can go out. I'm sleeping around. I got, man, I got four, five, six women on me. That's that pride of life. Boasting about it. That's not of the father. But of the world. Anything that's of this world, doing set apart, is of the world. Not of the father. Conquer your lust, people. First Corinthians 6. And started 18 to 20. We're going to see what we got to do now. You got to flee this stuff. First Corinthians 6, started 18 to 20. I'm sure you got to do now what you got to run from. Well, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. No, God. First Corinthians 6. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Six. Verse 18 to 20. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. So it says, flee fornication. Now, now, don't go to it. Don't walk to it. It says flee fornication. You could do spiritual fornication. You could do bodily fornication. I mean, you could do physical fornication, right? Every sin that the man doeth is without the, without, is, I mean, doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sins against his own body. Flee fornication. Go ahead, read. What? 
Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which there is you in you? Mm. Ye have of God, and ye are not your own. So this body that we have is not our own. Mm -hmm. When you come to the Most High to serve him, your body is now the temple of God. So if you serve in the Most High God who is holy and just and pure, you should want to be pure. That means anything you got inside you is defiling you, you're unclean. Your body equals the temple that belongs to God. Your body says, what? Now ye not that your body, I mean, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. That's what he said. He's going to send it to you back in John 14, right? That's right. So how do you be a help if, you, if your body is unclean? If you're unclean, how you got that helper, that comforter? You don't have it then, which is in you, which ye have, have of God, and ye are not your own. So you should want to keep this body, this temple, clean as you, clean as you possibly can. Same way you do with your cars. You got a new car, get a little dust on it, and you hit the car wash, that thing looks sparkling clean. You done got it waxed all up. But your physical body just filthy as I don't know what. Because you want to walk in sin, you want to walk in the flesh. You don't want to put off that old man. But you buy the temple, people. Verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. A price, therefore, go ahead. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So you are bought with a price. Mm -hmm. Christ came down here in the flesh. You feel me? To put on our sins, to be beat and broken for us. So we should, we should it says, therefore glory, therefore glory God in your body. We should want to walk blameless and pure as much as we can, the best we can. Because what the father did, because he sent his son to do for you. But we're so ignorant, so stiff-necked that what he did, we still don't really care. A lot of people want to serve God. They want to serve him. They want to have their own righteousness instead of going to God's righteousness. But now nah, it's a process, right? It's a, he has a way he wants to do this. So you have to flee fornication, flee sin. Our body is the Lord's. Keep it clean. From the top to the bottom. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. He's got this fleeing stuff still. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Yes. It says flee youthful lust. So now that youthful lust can be, you know, it could be that old lust from your youth that, you know, when you was coming out of this thing and you, you still trying to like, you know what I'm saying? You've been in this walk for some years and you still fighting some stuff that from your youth. Right. But you should have been fighting hard already and been breaking it down fast and praying to get that thing out of you. Also, you got some lust when you're a babe in this, when you first come into this, somebody who, did, somebody who never been to like, you know, a, a church atmosphere or really know the word. Now all of a sudden you now you hear this and, you, and the Lord is tugging on your heart. Yeah, you got sometimes you got that youthful lust from you as a babe. Now stuff is now Satan bringing stuff to you that you that you wasn't fighting when you was in sin. Flee youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, which is love, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. 
Have a pure heart, people. That's our mind. Mm -hmm. Pure, clean. Try to have that thing perfected. Be ye perfect as the Father is in heaven. So you got to flee all of this thing. Youthful lust, old lust, new lust. Get rid of it all. You got to resist this thing. Go ahead. James chapter 4. Jeez. And you're going to go to 7 and 8. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Go ahead. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So it tells you, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. You got to submit Right? Give yourself to him. You know how that song is it, it, it sing? I know Mike know it. Uh, I give myself away. You got to give yourself to this father mm -hmm. through Christ. Then it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So resist him. You know how they say? Not the day Satan. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to resist the devil because know why? You submitted your life. You submitted your body. You submitted your mind. You submitted your walk all to the Father through Christ. All praise is most high. Come on, people. Then it says, draw nigh to God. I mean, get close to him. Close as you possibly can. You know how you get, you know how you in bed, if you got a woman or a man, you want to snuggle, get real close to bunch of them. You, you know how they call it spooning? Man, get nigh to God. Mm -hmm. And he would draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands. Man, wash them. Clean. Get that dirt from your nails. All that filthy stuff you was touching. All that abominable things you was touching. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. You double-minded. Stop fighting this stuff that you stop going back and forth. With, with this stuff of the world, which is these sin, this old man you fighting, let it go. Because if you, you can do it, if you submit your whole your whole being to the Father through Christ, because you're gonna draw not not him, you're gonna draw closer to him daily. You're gonna start seeing that how you used to talk. You're gonna start seeing how you used to talk. Used to cuss a little bit, you know. You're doing it now. All of a sudden, you you noticing you're not even cussing like that no more. Now you gonna be like, oh my god, I ain't do that no more. I used to watch porn. Now you gonna you gonna be like, you ain't gonna have the desire no more. Flee from all this stuff. Draw not to God, people. We almost done. Ephesians chapter four. Uh, start at verse seventeen. We're gonna show you, we're gonna show you how you're gonna do this, how you can do this when who, who you should follow, not follow after. Go ahead when you get there, read Ephesians 4 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. You see that? Mm -hmm. Says, This I say, therefore, to testify in the Lord. That ye henceforth, henceforth walk not as other Gentiles. That's right. Don't be a follower. Follow Christ. He's our perfect example. It says, and walk, I mean, in the vanities of their mind. The vanities of their mind. Vain. They walking into like nothing. People walking after nothing. They out there just absent-minded. Thinking they, thinking they, uh, you know, going somewhere. Don't be a follower, people. Go ahead and read. 18, verse 18. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them mm. because of the blindness of their heart. Mm. Man, listen to this one again. We can read this again. I want you to understand this one. Having the understanding darkened, 
meaning they're blind, they can't see. When you're in the dark, you can't see. You, if you, you know how you're in the dark somewhere, you got to put your hands in front of you, trying to feel, feel, feel. Your understanding is darkened. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they reading this word and they saying something else and the word saying something else. A lot of people out here quoting these scriptures and breaking down scriptures with people, teaching people because their understanding is darkened. They don't have the true understanding of this word. Even when you hear this stuff from anybody, even us, go back and keep reading it because right. you want to make sure you understand they darken. Being alienated. Be, that's like a foreigner, a stranger from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Don't follow after them people. They are blinded. They are alienated from the life of God because they they're in ignorance because of their blindness of their heart. That veil is over them. They are. That's right. John 9, chapter, um, verse uh, 36, I believe, in Christ telling the Pharisees, says, some of you going to be made blind. You ain't got to go there, Kai. I would just, it just came out of memory. Some of you going to be made blind, and some going to be made to see. That's we right. going to pray that most help in our vision, not eyes of not wisdom, but my ears of we can hear, we can see, and we can understand this word. Read verse 19. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto the civiousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Mm, go ahead, read, go to 24. But ye have not so learned Christ. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. It said, you ain't learned Christ. No. Nope. It says, who being past feeling having given themselves over unto the civiousness. Toward mm -hmm. all uncleanness with greediness. But it says, you don't know why they do that? Because look at the verse 20. Because you don't, you ain't learned Christ. They ain't learned Christ. They don't, they far from Christ. They think they know Christ, but they don't. Verse 21. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. If so, that ye have heard him and have yep. been taught by him as the truth that's in Jesus. Keep going. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the okay. old man, go which ahead. is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. There you go. Go ahead. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Uh-huh. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in the righteousness and true holiness. There you go, people. Mm -hmm. It says, verse 22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation. That means your old behaviors. That's right. The old things used to do. Also, also the former conversation, talking trifling, that, that nasty talk. You know, Walker is talking about all kind of vile things and thinking it's funny. Is No, put off all that. Because that old man is still in you, which is corrupt according to the, the, the deceitful lust. So you want to put off that old man, the old behaviors, that old way of thinking, that old way of living, that old way of just doing things that's controversial to the most high God. And it says, here we go right here, look at verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That was already told back in Deuteronomy in the beginning it was telling the people. Circumcise your heart. Be, not, be not stiff neck. Let's talk about this spirit. Renew our mind. Renew your mind, people. Family, renew your mind in the spirit. And it says, and that ye put on a new man. A new man. First, Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Saying you a new creature in Christ Jesus, right? So you put on a new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Mm -hmm. Put on a new man. That's how you're going to kill that old man that's sitting there that's trying to fight you. That's how you're going to conquer this, this lust in his flesh by putting on a new man. And you know how you're going to do that? How you going to do that? Go right here, Kai. Ephesians, the same chapter, I mean, same book. Ephesians chapter 6, start at verse 11 to 17. 
this is how you going this is this is right here is the remedy right here people this is this is right here is going to get you where you need to be Start at verse 11 go to um we can go to verse 17 i'll stop and you stop put on the whole armor of god that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil hold on kai it said the half half of the armor the whole armor Nah, just the helmet the whole armor how about how about man, i just need my sword and shield the whole armor of god all right go ahead for we wrestle not against flesh and blood okay. but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places there you go wherefore take on to you the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and have it done all to stand. There you go. It says, for you don't wrestle. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Uh -uh. We're not here fighting nobody. Nope. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. This world is given to the hand of the wicked people. And it says, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You are fighting Satan and his, his minions. They are here to try to take you down. But you ain't fighting the people. Even when the people come against you, who is sending them? Who they got in them? Because you have that spirit of the Father, and they got the spirit of Satan and his people. And guess what they're doing? That's who you're fighting against. Because they're being ruled by a wickedness that's fighting against something that's in you trying to keep you down. So it says, wherefore, take on you the whole armor of God, not half the armor, not some days, and you know, today, I'm going to just wear my shield, I'm good, I'm going to just block. No, the whole armor, that ye may be able to withstand the evil, in the, withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, you want to be able to stand. You know, people not say, oh, we fall down, we get up. No, you can fall down by messing up. But you don't want to get knocked down because you out here lacking and they got the arm on. That's right. Stand in that uh, evil day. Go ahead. Stand Verse there 14. forward. Verse 14, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So here we, here we starting off. Now you're going you're gonna to girt your loins up, right? About with truth. That's that strength. Mm -hmm. And have it on the breastplate of righteousness. Go ahead. The breastplate. Go ahead. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. When you see a, um, a, um, a soldier back in the days when they had armor on. So he got the breastplate, right? He girded up already. It says now your feet. You want to cover your feet up. You don't want your feet out. It says you want feet um, and your feet shod with preparation of Gospel of peace. Go ahead. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. There you go. Now you got the shield of faith. Faith through our works is dead, right? So it says, the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts. That means when Satan throwing all this stuff at you, throwing these darts at you, trying to get you here, hit you here, guess what? You got that shield, you blocking it. Keep going. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. A helmet of salvation. That means your mind is free of all this corruption going on. And your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You know what you know what the word of God do, it can cut, right? Right? That spirit, the word, the sword of the spirit, right? Because this 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 these words that Christ said in John 63 are life and spirit. So we need these things. We need this whole armor so you can fight off everything that's coming at you, so you can be that rightful soldier that he's looking for. See, God is looking for soldiers. When you go into the army, that's why they go through a boot camp. They want to see who is strong enough to go through these tests and all these things that's going to test you and push you. 
And the ones who make it through, they're in the army. The ones who, who, who cop out, I can't do it, act like, what they do? Send them home. But this, I want you to read 18, it's not the lesson. Read 18 real quick, Kyle, because this is what we all gotta do with each other as well. Read verse 18. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watch it there on too with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. So as we go on through these things, we pray in always with all prayer, right? And supplication in the spirit, which watching there, watching there unto with all perseverance, supplication for all saints. Even you praying for your brothers and your sisters, pray for us. We, we might meet a couple of days a week, but guess what? When you get your prayer, you pray for your brethren. You pray for everybody. When I pray, I pray for Lion and Zion. I pray for Mama Val. I pray for um, Elder. I pray for Kai, Mike, um, Naziah. I pray for all people. I'm like, yo, Lord, look over us. Protect us. Because I don't know what everybody's fighting with. But I pray that the most high will stain you in the day of evil that you are on your own as well is praying or fasting, we really do, reading your word. But I'm we got your back. We might not see each other in person, but spiritually, we got each other back. So you pray for your you pray for your people. I got three more places. So we're gonna see now. We see you got the armor on you. You the you the you the you the confess your sins, you ain't covering them up. You, you, you fleeing from fornication, putting off that old man. This is again, we'll go to Matthew 12, start at verse 43. This is another thing we gotta do, people. We gotta be ready for certain things, man. We have no kinks in our armor. We can't have no kinks. Matthew 12 and 43, they go to 45. When the uns when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, go ahead. seeking rest. And find of none. Go ahead. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, sweat, and garnished. So you see that? So this is telling you, you done got all that out of you. Now you in the spirit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now you got the you got the arm, you trying to do everything. And now you know now he gonna say try to catch you laughing. So it's telling you right here. It says, when that unclean spirit is gone, you got your body, right? Out of the out of you. He's walking around dry place, seeking rest and find of none. So that 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 that, that spirit you had on you. It loved it to be in that in, 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 in you, like a home to them. They was rest, they had their feet up, shoes off. You know, as somebody come in your house, like almost the first time, and you take they take their shoes off and they be chilling like you be like, bro, you ain't here, you ain't here resting, you you sitting better than me. It's mild. Man, and look, verse 44. Then he said, I'll return to my house. So now you done got that spirit. You done got that flesh. You done conquered it. But now he come that spirit again. Trying to get back where it came from. And when he has come, he found it empty, swept, and garnished. Meaning you cleaned up. He trying to come back and he like, yo. This place is all clean. Let me get back up in here. Read verse 45, Kaye. Then go a pity and take it with himself seven other spirits mm. more wicked than himself. Oh, my man. He enter ahead. in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is, is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Mm. So when you kick out that old man, Change the locks. Mm -hmm. Teach. When you in a relationship with somebody and y'all separated, y'all break up, whatever, and y'all was living with each other, I'm just paraphrasing, you know, use the example. You don't, and they don't give you the key back. You don't keep, you don't keep the regular locks from the door. If you, you know what I mean? You change the locks. So they can't just walk in if they feel like they want to just come over there and, 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 and harass you. So it's telling you. So when you put out that old man, when you conquering this flesh and this lust, when you putting that away, and when it's trying to come back, it's coming back even stronger with more people, like a house party. Mm -hmm. 
It's trying to bring his friends with him. Like, yo, it's clean up over here. And I'm, no, you want to come on with me? We can get right over here. No, change the locks. Don't let that, them evil spirits, don't let that lust, don't let this flesh creep back in where now you worse off than before. This is why it says in the, in the, in the armor that you got to be ready with that shield. So guess what? You blocking all that. So you're going to withstand. You're going to stand in that day of evil when you battle them. You don't want to get, you know, you don't want to turn back from this, this, this walk and, and, and everything that these promises God is supposed to be giving us as people and go back in this wicked generation out in this world and be worse off. You ever see somebody who was in the church or something, and then they really leave the God or something, they go back out, they, they be bugged out. Mm -hmm. All to be trying to doctrine, they're out here doing all kinds of stuff. And you be like, yo, I can't believe, like, man, like, did they really wasn't like did they really know God? Like, they really like talking like this. Because that's what most our team turn to a reprobate. You worse off than before. Mm. But through everything that we do, everything you fighting, family, guess what? This right here, this next scripture is going to show you that when God got you. Go to 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. This right here blessed my soul when I read the scripture when I was doing this lesson. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. We have a good God, people. We have a good, good, good God. That love us. Our father love us. Go ahead, Kaye. That have no temptation take of you, but such as is common to man. Go ahead. But God is faithful, who would not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Go ahead. But, but with the temptation also make a way Amen. to escape Amen. that ye may be able to bear it. Mm. All oh, praise to the Most High God. Mm -hmm. He said, there have no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. He's saying there's nothing new under the sun. That's right. Ain't no new temptation that you're going through and nobody else been going through or somebody else can be going through. This is common to man. But it said, but God is faithful who would not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. He would not put nothing more on you that you can't bear. He would never give you anything that he know you can't escape from, that you can't beat. He know you can beat it. That's why he put you through it. Because right after, the, after this, is, it's like a season. When you go through seasons, you know what I mean? You come out stronger. So he, he's showing you, he know you can do it, but he want to know, he want to make, he want to get you to know that you can do it. Don't let these, don't let none of this stuff in this world that you go through in his life take you from the love of God, the love of Christ that you want to walk away or be so down and out that you can't pray, that you can't read, that you can't see kids' face. It says, but Will, but, but, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape mm -hmm. that ye may be able to bear it. He got a way for you people. Family, he has a way. I don't care if your husband going crazy on you. I don't care if your wife, I don't care if your job, I don't care whatever you fighting against, lust, um, fornication, anything, abandonment, anything. You fighting against that in your mind, these thoughts of people, somebody telling you, you feel like you ain't good enough, that you be doing all this. But I mean, guess what? He is here for you. He ain't put nothing on you can't bear. I can tell you about my life, man. I was up and down. I mean, I was down one time so bad. But man, he brought me out of that. He showed me I can get through all this. And you know why I can get through it? You know why you could get through it? Philippians 4 and 13. This is why. This is why. Philippians 4 and 13. 
Ain't nothing too hard for God. Four and 13. It's right here, last one. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Here you go. Mm -hmm. You can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, you. We can do it. You can conquer all your lust. You can conquer your flesh. You can kill that old man. You can get rid of all this sin Jeez. through Christ, which strengthens you. You can be that new woman, that new man. You can be that Christ-like woman and man. You can walk in the spirit. You can defeat Satan. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You don't have to be dead in sin. You can get the kingdom because Christ who strengthens you. So family, what I'm saying is, don't love this world. Don't love this flesh. Don't love this sin. Because anything you do is like, you do that, you're an enemy to God. And you can conquer, you can kill that old man off. Mm -hmm. You can conquer this flesh, you conquer this lust. You can be blameless. You can be a spotless. You can be that chaste version that the Most High is calling you to be. That's right. So we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and you. There you go, people. That's it. That's the end of the lesson.